Good morning and welcome to Business News on Sunrise. Coming up this morning, renowned economist Kwame Pienim jumps to the defense of Central Bank Governor Dr. Ernest Addison over advancing monies to a struggling government. It's the Minister for Finance's responsibility to report to Parliament. We didn't make Bank of Ghana responsible to go to Parliament. Also, International Standards Organization endorses the Association of Ghana Industries and the Ghana Standards Authority for upholding higher standards in Ghana's manufacturing space. Through international standards, Ghana industry can achieve competitiveness because standards are an invitation for excellence. Plus, experts call for critical policy analysis to better inform decision-making in Ghana, especially as the country experiences multiple challenges. I want to make any changes to our tax schedule. The sum could be a tool to tell the impact that it will have on, let's say, young people. My name is Menu Afu. We'll bring you the details of our headlines and many other stories shortly. Thank you for staying with us. In our first story, renowned economist Kwame Pienim has jumped to the defense of the central bank governor, Dr. Ernest Addison, saying he did nothing wrong in advancing monies to a struggling government. Speaking in an exclusive interview with Pakusi Asare, Kwame Pienim rather laid the blame at the doorstep of the finance minister for failing to report to parliament about the need for the Bank of Ghana to exceed its 5% lending limit due to crisis situation. Mr. Pienim, this was anticipated, and that is why the law was made that once the Bank of Ghana wanted to give beyond the 5% as is mandated by law, it needed to go to Parliament. And that's what the minority ranking member, then ranking member on finance in 2022, Kisela Forsin, said that the bank had printed an amount of 22 billion cities to finance government's budget without parliamentary approval. And your explanation is what? I don't recall that they need parliamentary approval. Mm. Remember, we suspended the Fiscal Responsibility Act. When the Fiscal Responsibility Act was removed, it was saying in effect, we cannot obey the regulation that we have governing the fiscal. All right. Okay, so we are suspending it. When the Minister for Finance went to Parliament and they agreed to suspend the Fiscal Responsibility Act, Parliament should have asked what happens to the equivalent, that is the monetary policy one, which is, I think, Article 36 of the amendment, amended Bank of Ghana Act, which says that if there is an emergency and Bank of Ghana needs to be able to suspend the rules surrounding monetary policy, what they do is to inform the Minister for Finance. It's the Minister for Finance's responsibility to report to Parliament. We didn't make Bank of Ghana responsible to go to Parliament. So when the Minister for Finance went to Parliament to suspend the Fiscal Responsibility Act, Somebody from the opposition or from the government should have asked, what happens to Article 36 of the Banking Act? And the minister should have said, concurrently, that part is also uh, suspended. You heard renowned economist Kwame Pienim there. Also, the International Standards Organization has endorsed the Association of Ghana Industries and the Ghana Standards Authority for upholding higher standards in Ghana's manufacturing space. At the launch of the 12th AGI Industry and Quality Awards, Secretary General of ISO Sergio Mujica says adhering to international standards is an invitation to excellence and competitiveness among Ghanaian industries. The Association of Ghana Industries has re echoed its stance for a supportive environment from government for local industries. Members of the association are calling for policies that will make industry thrive. They argue for the promotion of infant industries and local production to reduce the country's import bill. Secretary General of International Standard Organization, Sergio Mojica, on the importance of standards. Through international standards, Ghana industry can achieve competitiveness because standards are an invitation for excellence. It's a group of experts from all around the world that define the best practice. And through international standards, you will be able to apply that best practice here in Ghana. And from here, you can export within Africa and also to the rest of the world. 
you have the experts that are really living the real industry life. So we need your voice, and that's why this recognition is so important. Director General of the Ghana Standards Authority, Professor Alex Dodu, noted his outfit is making processes simpler and cost-effective for businesses in the era of the continental free trade area. FDA is a regulator. They will give you your reg re regulatory approval. But if you do wish to have certification at the same time, you tell them. And by the time their processes are done, the Ghana Standards Authority process should be done so that you have the GSA mark and the FDA approval. That shortens your time, saves you money, saves you costs, and makes your business competitive. We are ruling out Ghanaian industry towards Africa. If you look at Kenya, for instance, we have a form of mutual understanding between the Ghana Standards Authority and the Kenyan Bureau of Standards. That was Aben Ejekumbuating's report. Meanwhile, about 63 farmers have become the first set of farmers to receive certification from the Roundtable of Sustainable Palm Oil Production. This was after a successful completion of the Global Quality and Standards Program organized in the country by the Swiss Embassy in partnership with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. The following report has more. Switzerland, through its State Secretariat for Economic Affairs, SECO, has partnered with UNIDO over the past 15 years to strengthen Ghana's quality infrastructure system with the aim of supporting sustainable integration into global markets. Speaking at the closing ceremony of the Global Quality and Standards Program, Deputy Head of Mission at the Swiss Embassy, Dr. Simoni Heavily, said the initiative has helped improve standards of farmers within the cocoa cashew and oil palm value chains. These farmers have told us that they have collectively increased their yield from 6 tons per hectare to 18. That is three times more. And also, coupled with the premiums they get from the RSPO, they have achieved better livelihoods for themselves and their families. You need a representative for Ghana and Liberia, Stavros Papastav, highlighted some successes the program has chalked, including harnessing Ghana's trade competitiveness under the AFCFTA. Chief Director of the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Dr. Patrick Nimo said, the partnership between UNIDO and SECO has improved the government's industrialization agenda. The Global Quality and Standards Program featured goodwill messages from some beneficiaries. And that was a report by my colleague Bismarck Ewusa. In more stories, experts have called for critical policy analysis to better inform decision-making in Ghana, especially as the, as the country experiences multiple challenges. At the release of the 2019 Social Accounting Matrix, they observed the matrix helps to analyze the effects of policy before implementation. A social accounting matrix represents flows of all economic transactions that take place within an economy. The International Food Policy Research Institute co-hosted the release of the social accounting metrics for Ghana under the Nexus project in partnership with the Ghana Statistical Service and the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research. Senior Research Officer at the International Food Policy Research Institute, Seth Asante, spoke on the economic significance of the social accounting matrix. Provide uh, a standard platform for policy analysis. It helps uh, economists or uh, any analyst, academia, uh, policy makers to kind of understand the structure of the economy. And this helps in terms of prioritizing policy implementation. In Senior Research Fellow at the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, Dr. Andrew J. Holmes, noted the matrix helps to analyze the effects of policies before implementation. We can analyze the impact on uh, specific households within the economy, and that is useful. So if I'm uh, in the chair of the finance minister today, and I'm, I want to make any changes to our tax schedule, the sum could be a tool to tell the impact that it will have on, let's say, young people who live in the rural areas. 
That report was put together by my colleague Eben Ejikum Wating. Let's take more stories. Governance expert Professor Bafo Ajimanjia is calling for a two-year moratorium on mining license issuance to combat corruption. At the book launch on corruption in Ghana, he questioned the country's 10% stake in extractive sector and called for an independent scrutiny of government contracts. The government today or any next government coming in should place a two-year moratorium on licensing for mining so that the nation as a whole can reflect on what we do with our natural resources. Mm -hmm. It's unacceptable for a government and one individual or two people going somewhere to sign a document committing all of us for 50 years or more to an agreement, a contract that is in play. All government contracts with a value of five million or more should be subject to an independent review. It should be subjected to independent review. Independent body of experts and others who can help us to retain the wealth in the country. You heard governance expert Professor Bafo Ajimangjia. Let's now take a listen to how the city is faring against major trading currencies and how some of our key commodities are faring on the global market. On the interbank foreign exchange market, where banks trade amongst themselves, the dollar recorded no price change, selling at 11 cities. The British pound lost 9 pesos, selling at 13 cities, 91 pesos. The euro is selling at 11 cities, 92 pesos. It lost 4 pesos. However, be guided that these figures will be higher at a forex bureau near you. On the global commodities market, price of cocoa is up by 0.35%, selling at $3,435 per ton. Price of Brent crude oil is down by 0.01%, selling now at about $83 per barrel. While the price of an ounce of gold is up by 0.08%, selling at about $1,917. was an update from the forex and commodities markets that will be all for business news on sunrise for more business stories please check out our website 3news.com my name is minwafo stay tuned sports news is up next